partake in thy table this morning in Jesus' name. And Lord, we ask of oh God above all, let no sinner go the same. For we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Can you raise your sound of worship in this house this morning? Can you appreciate the good God? Give him praise, give him honor, give him adoration. For he's a wonderful God. We are here in the first Sunday in the month of April. It is not by our power, not by our might. Raise your sound this morning and begin to worship him. Give him the glory, give him the honor. Because you are light today, it's not by your power. Appreciate him. So many times you've mentioned his name and things come true for you. Appreciate him. Give him the glory. Say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for I am alive today. Lord, I thank you. January 1st, I was in your presence. Here in the first month of April, I am still in your presence. And by the end of this year, I will still be in your presence. Appreciate it. Open the floor gate and say, God, I am grateful. God, I am grateful. Your name is wonderful. Your name is beautiful. Thank you, Jesus, for all you've done. Thank you for everything you are doing. Thank you for what you are still going to do. Appreciate him. Give him the glory for those doors that he opened. For those things you didn't ask for that he did for you. Appreciate him this morning. Say, God, I am grateful. Over my family, I am grateful. Over Paul's house, I am grateful. Give him the glory. Give him the glory. Appreciate him. What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. Oh. You didn't want a born without us. Hey, so Jesus, you brought it down. Oh, our sins were great, but your love was greater. Oh, what can separate us?
praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him glory. From January, February, March to the month of February. Father, we give him praise. Give him glory due to his name. Worship him. Worship him. Bless his holy name. It is of the Lord mercies that we are not consumed. His compassion faileth not. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Give him praise. Give him praise. Father, we worship him. Worship him. Great is his faithfulness to us in this church. Great is his faithfulness. Great is his faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Oh God, my Father, there is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassion, they fail not. As thou hast been, thy forever will Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. Worship him, say, Father, I thank you. Thank you for his faithfulness in your life. Psalm 105, verses 13 to 15. When they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people, he permitted no one to do them wrong. Yes, he rebuked kings for their sake, saying, Touch not my anointed, and do my prophet no harm. I want to call upon God as I journey in the month of April, 
and beyond. Make me untouchable. Make me untouchable, unkillable, immolestable, irresistible, unharassable, indomitable. Open your mouth and begin to declare. Make me untouchable. Touch not my anointing. As I take your anointing today, as I partake in the communion, I am untouchable. Open your mouth, declare, declare. I am untouchable in the journey of the month of April. In the journey in the year 2004 and beyond, I am untouchable. I am unkillable. I am irresistible, immolestable. I am indomitable. Open your mouth, declare it, declare it. Declare it to the hearing of the Lord. Declare it to the hearing of the Lord. I am untouchable. I am untouchable. No, I am untouchable. Enemy cannot touch me. Kidnapper cannot touch me. Open your mouth and declare. Open your mouth that I am untouchable. Touch not my anointed. I am untouchable. I am untouchable. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. First Kings chapter 5, verse 4. First Kings chapter 5, verse 4. But now that Lord my God has given me rest on every side, there is neither adversary nor evil occurrence. Rest is given by God. The Lord will give you rest. The Lord will give you rest on every side. Roundabout. I want you to declare in the journey of this month and beyond, Father, give me rest. It is God that giveth rest. Give me rest on every side, to my right, to my left, roundabout. Rest over my family. Rest over my children. Rest over my wife. Rest over my aunt. Rest over my career. Open your mouth, begin to declare the rest of the Lord. When you have rest, there will never be adversary. There will not be evil occurrence. Rest on every side. Oluwa fumini simi yika. Rest on every side. Rest over every endeavor. Rest over my family. In community where I'm living, let there be rest. In Nigeria, let there be rest. No evil occurrence. No evil occurrence. No adversary. No evil occurrence. We receive the rest of the law. Over Potter's house, there shall be rest. Over every member, there shall be rest. We shall not run enter skelter. We shall not mourn. We shall not weep. No evil occurrence in this church. In the mighty name of Jesus, over everyone connected, associated, related to this church, oh God, oh Potter's house, rest on every side. In the name of Jesus, we receive your rest. You are the giver and we receive it. You are the giver. We receive it. We ask of, of it for rest over our life, over our children, rest. Over our pastor, rest. And his family, rest. Over every minister, we rest. Over every pastor, rest. Over every worker, every man, every woman, every child, we receive rest in the name of Jesus. There shall be no evil occurrence. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. As we are said to the end of the Lord, so shall it be in Jesus' name. You are welcome in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. On behalf of our Father and in the Lord, Bishop Francis Father, okay, you are welcome. Receive that rest now and beyond in Jesus' name. On behalf of our little pastor and mommy, you are welcome in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says, what is a, a lamb that was slain to receive glory, honor, blessings? We are yet to return the honor, adoration to him for giving his life in ransom for our sin. And you are blessed as we listen.
Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Can we just bless the name of the Lord once again for bringing us into the month of April? Can we just celebrate the ancient of days? Can we just worship the Lord over our life? The God, the Father, the Lord over everything. Can we just say, shh? Can we appreciate Him? Can we thank Him? Can we honor Him? In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father, we want to thank you this morning. Thank you for the beginning of the month of April. Thank you for what you have done for us. Today is a Sunday, the first Sunday in the month of April. Even though today is the seventh day in this month, you've been so good to us. You've kept us for seven days. You've kept us since the first day in the month, in the month of January. You kept us in February. You kept us in March. Where in the month of April you've been doing the same. We lift up our hands to say thank you. We worship you. We adore your name. We know that you will still keep us for the rest of this year. And we bless your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Can the church say a louder amen? amen. Praise Jesus. Let's have a seat. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Amen. I want to say to your neighbor, welcome to church. Tell him or her better. Can we say it louder? I want you to appreciate someone beside you and say, welcome to church. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Um. At the leaders' meeting this morning, we dealt with the power that is in the name of Jesus. Very wonderful. And then um, I got a new perspective, and then um, it, it made me to write, it made me write some few things that one should study on. We celebrate Jesus. Um, this month has been prophetically declared. As a month of invaluable proofs, proofs, undeniable proofs. Oh, and then um, when I learned what I learned from the leaders' meeting, and I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I lead it, I, I link it with what the, the month subject is or the month focus is, and then. Um, I didn't know we finished because when he led us to pray, I kept praying. And what has been my prayer is, in the name of Jesus, this is my month of invaluable proofs, undeniable proofs. I'm going to make impacts. And we have substances in my hands. And I want us to use that to declare in the name of Jesus. See, listen, listen, listen. Um, some of, if all our pastors and ministers who did not come to yesterday's leaders meeting we're going to deal with that one later but we were taught some things yesterday and I came up with two things that he taught us expansiated on new creation realities which as long as you believe in Jesus as long as confess Jesus as long as as you invite Jesus into your life, three things happen. Number one, you are justified. We taught it also during the Easter celebration. Not only are you justified, you are redeemed. Not only are you redeemed, then what happens to you is you are saved. You are no longer going to hell. But how you are going how the benefits, how you will enjoy God on the surface of the earth is dependent on the knowledge of God's word, your obedience to
to divine principles and divine instructions and how you take advantage of everything put in the word of God. Like one, how you can use the name of Jesus to your advantage. Praise Jesus. How you can use the name of Jesus to your advantage. That's number one. How obedient to instructions. Scriptural instructions. Scriptural instructions. Then when you take advantage or the advantages provided, then what happens? You see yourself enjoying God. So I want, I want you to declare over your life at this service that I decree in the name of Jesus in the month of April how we have undeniable proofs of new things happening in my life in the name of Jesus in my career in the month of April I'm going to have undeniable proofs in the name of Jesus I command them helpers to come to me what will make it happen I command them in the name of Jesus let it happen the wisdom I need the knowledge I need the right steps I need to take the people that must come the people that must come into my life I open my door I attract them because I'm working in partnership with Jesus therefore I decree in the name of Jesus I have undeniable proofs happening in my life I have them I have the fruits in my hand in the name of Jesus great things will happen to me I will not be sick I will not be confounded I will not be disgraced I am helped of the Lord I receive the help of the Lord helpers are coming to me day by day without fail where my applications are it will be granted in the name of Jesus my helpers are coming from the north from the south from the east from the west in the name of Jesus I decree I am standing I am standing I will not fail I will not put my hands into iniquity in the name of Jesus I decree no heap around me in the name of Jesus I have the rest of the law rest in my mind rest in my body rest in my home rest in my family rest in my finance i command money to come to me in the name of jesus wherever my money is i call you forth come to me wherever my money is i call you forth to come to me in the north come in the south come in the east will come in the west come what i need to do to make money come i receive them in the name of Jesus I begin to move from glory to glory in the name of Jesus what eyes have not seen I begin to see them what has not come into the heart of man I begin to perceive them my eyes are open my ears can hear in the name of Jesus I'm being honored of the Lord in the name of Jesus my eyes are opened my eyes are opened my eyes are opened my eyes are opened in the name of Jesus. I attract everything that I need on this head. I attract the favor that I need. I attract the grace that I need. I attract every resources that is required for me to fulfill my purpose. I receive them in the name of Jesus. Can we shout amen? Can we shout amen? You cannot be confounded. You cannot be confused in the name of Jesus. Um, I'm going to prophesy. God told me something in Exodus chapter 4 verse 12. is part of the covenant that God gave to me. When there was one time I was praying for the church. And then I got bothered. I saw brethren serving the Lord faithfully. And I'm, I'm wondered. I, I, I was telling God. Lord, see the way your people are serving the Lord. I want you to do something. I was thinking if I could give things, I would. But I am human and I'm limited. Then God told me that whatever you want to see, start speaking it. Then he gave me that scripture in Exodus chapter 4 verse 8. And he says, go, I will be with your mouth. Then he asked me to command. Huh? And since then, each time 
I want to pray for people. What do I try to do is I keep speaking the word over them. If you see, he said, now therefore go. I will be with thy mouth. Ah, that, is the, 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 that is a word that God gave to me. He said, then I will be with your mouth. Speak. So I speak over your life. Every need of yours are met at this service in the name of Jesus. This month of April, everything that will make life godly, everything that will make life easy, I command them to come to you in the name of Jesus. Every confusion, I command confusion to disappear in the name of Jesus. For God has not given you the spirit of fear, but he has given you the spirit of love and power and of sound mind. I command fear to disappear. I command you to receive the spirit of grace, the spirit of power, the spirit of sound mind in the name of Jesus. You have the right way to think right in the name of Jesus. There is rest in your life. Help us that you need this week, this month, they will come to you. The revelation that you need, heaven will show them to you in the name of Jesus. You will stand in the right place and you will obey the word of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Amen. If there are sicknesses or diseases in anybody's life, hear you the word of the Lord. The Bible says in Mark chapter 16, you said they will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I lay hands upon you prophetically and I say, in the name of Jesus, recover now. In Jesus' name. He says, in my name they will cast out demons. If there are demon-like oppressions or activities in your life, in your business, in your home, in your marriage, in Christ Life Church, the Potter's House, in any members either present listening to us online or they are not even listening at all. But by the fact that they belong to this family, I command demons in the name of Jesus, I cast you out. Live this people in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Praise Jesus. So on, on Wednesday, for those people that were in the fellowship, I climbed the altar here. And while I was coming, God spoke to me that this is a month of testimony. Wow. I just came to emphasize it and then we went into the communion. And um, I want to emphasize that this month you will testify in the name of Jesus. Um, this month should be a, a month of prophetic declarations and prophetic encounter because it's a month of invaluable proof. Undeniable proof. It must show and it will show in your life in the name of Jesus. Can we say a louder amen? amen. Luke chapter 21 verse 10 to 13 or to 15. IT, thank you. Thank you. Jesus said something here and then verse 13 is my key, is my key word. Then said unto them, nation shall, shall rise against nation and the kingdom against kingdom. This is the last days. Jesus told us, our father, our, our Lord told us, our big brother told us, our joint heir told us then that nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom verse 11 verse 11 and there will be great earthquakes shall be in diverse places and the famines and the pestilence and the fearful sights and great signs shall be from heaven verse, verse 13 but before all this they shall lay hands on you and persecute you and deliver you up to the synagogues and into prisons, bring and um, being brought forth before kings and rulers for my name's sake. Verse 13. But despite all the challenges, despite all these challenges, because there will be diverse troubles that we are currently experiencing in Nigeria, not only in Nigeria, also it's happening in Europe, it's happening in the United Kingdom, it's happening in America, it's happening in North America, it's happening in South America, it's happening in Asia, it's happening all over. Or even including the Middle East, it's happening in all the continents of the earth. But the Bible says when this will be happening, but God says what will happen to us and it shall turn 
to you for a testimony. I, I, I decree, whatsoever you are going through, it will turn to you for a, task, for a testimony. 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 In the name of Jesus. See, it happened to Isaac. There was famine in the land. But if there was no famine, I'm sure Isaac won't be that great as he, would, as he was. Famine was an opportunity for his greatness to be propelled. It was an opportunity for him to become great. Opportunity came in the midst of famine, in the midst of troubles, in the midst of pestilence, in the midst of travails. Because Jesus said, this will be happening all over the world. But for you, it shall turn to you for a testimony. Say, it will turn to me for a testimony. You are not saying it with an attitude. It shall turn to me for a testimony. Say it louder. It will turn to me for a testimony. Say it louder. It will turn to me for a, for a testimony. Amen. It also happened to David. Philistine came and they were threatening Israel. And what happened? Saul was terrified. The hands of Saul were terrified. And a man emerged, Goliath of God. And then he started terrifying them. He was coming. He kept on. He kept on. He kept on boasting and speaking. But a man came, David, a young boy. A young boy came. He saw that as a template. He saw that as an opportunity that he has been waiting for. That he had been waiting for. For the arrival of his emergence. That he has seen it. That oh, that was on this stage he said for me. For me to emerge. And what did he do? He took advantage of that. And from that day, he was enlisted. As the commander of the army, he rose to become the general just at the win of a battle. It became a testimony to him. That would be your case in the name of Jesus. That would be your case in the name of Jesus. Why am I painting this? We need to have this mindset. When you are seeing these challenges, when you are seeing these troubles, when you are seeing these things going on, what should you know? You should be sure. That an opportunity has come. It's not the opportunity to be, to be depressed. It's not the opportunity to be worried. When there are troubles and problems around you. There are opportunities for you to fulfill purpose. For you to make impact. Hallelujah. There was one minister's meeting that was done. That was conducted when I was much younger. And then they called Prophet Baba Jide into that meeting. And they invited younger ministers who were in the likes of our father in the Lord then. Younger that I meant was that to Baba Jide, they were much younger. So, and then it was in Elisha. I am not saying that Iwanuki was there. But younger ministers of his generation were there. And then the team of the conference is the work of God. So, they invited and they brought Baba last then Prophet Babaji the last. Then everybody was the, the, everybody was speaking English, good English. And then Baba came. Baba said, ah, all of you, that this conference has been great. They brought international ministers, they have spoken. What do I need to say? That well, I will say that the works of God, I will just define it, then I will give a testimony, then I'll pray for you, then I will go. Then he said, what, the work of God is the one that God has granted you to do. Then he cited an example which is also um, he looks, I can cite it to complement what I'm saying this money. Then he said, he had a catechist. You know, if you had a um, CSE background you know what it means. Somebody that was just learning the work of God. He said, then a woman, a woman's child 
died. And they brought it, they brought the dead, in the, the dead body to the first tree. And then Baba said, he prayed for six hours. Nothing happened. He invited other colleagues to, to join. They prayed. Additional three hours, nothing happened. Then Baba said, everybody was waiting that um, at the evening, Prophet Baba Jide will, would call the mother to come and take the boy alive. So Baba said, he looked at it, what will I tell this woman? Shame was about to come. So Baba called the, all other prophets left. Baba too said he was looking for an escape route and he did, he got they got the catechist that come. You know, it's around 4 p.m. I'll be going to another um, smaller town in Elisha area. So, you stay here with this dead body. When it's like 7.30 or 8 p.m., you will now go and call, when it will be dark, you go and call the, the, the mother. Then, if you come and carry this dead child, you tell her that Baba had left for another meeting. Baba said that was how he escaped. And then when he left, that young man saw it as an opportunity to begin his ministry. And then the man said, Oluwa, Baba ti lo, suban okbe mino, e ni yi oma yi okodon tide. Then the boy started crying and started praying. Everything he he learned in the Bible. He started. After about one, two hours, the boy sneezed. And the boy came alive. The boy came alive. Can you shout Jesus? Then, instead of Baba, um, the boy to go and call um, the woman to come and carry the dead child. Then, he called, he took the boy. They were walking on the street. And there was a crusade and revival in the, in the old city. Then, revival. So, Baba came when it would be like 9 p.m. So that he would technically come. In. Then, Baba was entering the, entering the quarters. He was hearing the, the noise of revival. And you know, the, the old people, the old area was filled with people. Ah, what was happening? Baba said when he got there, with shame, that he discovered that the boy was living. Now, what am I trying to say is this. That was a platform for that boy to become an evangelist. He became an evangelist because of one single miracle. I want to decree over your life that testimony, that incident, that occurrence, that matter, that solution, that will bring you from obscurity to prominence. I command them to happen this month, this year, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. So that happened. It happened. It happened. In Acts chapter 1, verse 3, that is where the theme of this month is. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many invaluable proofs, being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Hmm. Jesus proved that he resurrected. Without this, the purpose of his coming would be a waste. He needed to make sure that the disciples were ready to continue where he stopped. Hence, the kingdom of God will collapse. The mission will be half accomplished. A continuity will be very difficult. Jesus knew it. So he had to stay back. The disciples were not ready. They were confused. They were in disarray. They went back. So he needed to stay back to make sure that the proofs of his ministry was established. He needed to hand that over the ministry to the disciples, the kingdom to the disciples for them to continue. Jesus had to stay, 
to stay extra 40 days to get men and women ready to continue the kingdom business. Hence, the whole sacrifice and the power that God gave to him that brought him from the grave would have been futile and useless. Resurrection power will be available, but ignorance, not known, ignorance, that is for people not knowing the resurrection power is alive and active in their lives, will have made the kingdom useless and then the purpose of God not being fulfilled. If you see Acts chapter 1, verse 4 to 8, I want us to see what Jesus said. I want us to see what Jesus said. Yes, I've been assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which, see, which is said, ye have heard of me. Yes, verse, verse, we're reading to verse 8, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. He knew the importance of releasing the power to them. Giving them the, the resources, the tools that they needed for them to advance the kingdom. Then verse 6, verse 6, when the therefore were come together, they asked of him saying, Lord, would thou at this time restore the, again the kingdom of Israel? They were interpreting the earthly kingdom for the heavenly kingdom of God that should be brought on the earth. Verse 7, and he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father had put in his own power. Verse 8, verse 8, but for you, ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come on you and ye shall be my witnesses. You shall be witnesses unto me in both Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. This is what Jesus said. And this is what he said. I, I said, I put something here which I want you to know. Leadership is not about how far you advance yourself. It is about how far you can advance others. John Maxwell says something. If you run well, but you're unable to pass the bad thing to another runner, you lose the race. I'm going to repeat. If you run well, but you are unable to pass the batting to another runner, you run, you have, you have missed the race. Jesus knew the importance of this. So in passing, in giving the batting to the next set of people to continue the advancement of his kingdom, he had to introduce the third personality of God, which is the Holy Ghost. Which he promised before and it happened. Hallelujah. You and I had a responsibility to do exactly what Jesus did. Therefore, your proof of your existence cannot be fulfilled without making impact in life. The impact for which God created you the reason for you being sent here. When we are talking of the invaluable proofs, it is only related to your purpose on the earth. Brethren, what is your purpose? What is your impact? Someone says, what you do on a day-to-day -day basis, and you do it effectively and efficiently well, when you continue to do it, in the midst of it, God will reveal your purpose to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Romans chapter 8, verse 18 to 22, Matthew, I mean, Romans chapter 8, verse 18 to 22, I want you to see, for I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. I'm driving to a point. Revelation that will come through us. Through us. Through our impact. Through the fulfillment of our purpose. Through us acting on the dream. The idea. 
the reasons for you for which you are created. For I reckon, verse 19, verse 19, for the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the sons of God to be manifested for your impact. They are waiting. They want to see the proofs. They want to see the proofs of your existence. They want to see the proofs of your existence. See, Paul said, if on this earth, all we just need to do is to just um, go to school, acquire the certificate, get a job, then we are married, we raise children, we build houses and buy cars, we grow old and we die. He said we are of all men miserable. Without impact. Methuselah died, lived for so many years without impact. Hallelujah. My challenge, my charge to you is why are you living? What impact are you making? Say this. Verse 20. Verse 20. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who had subjected the same in hope. There is an hope for humanity through your impact, through my impact. And the expectation, the focus is through us who are redeemed of the Lord to solve problems. Do you know why unbelievers are doing great things? Because the people in the kingdom, they are not having enough capacity to do what God has done. So what God is just doing is, God was just doing exactly doing he did to King Cyrus. Because it was King Cyrus that had that level of authority to fulfill his purpose and his agenda. So God had to use him. He said, Cyrus, my servant, whom the right hand of whom I'm, I'm holding. He had to use him. But why that the children of God are alive and they cannot make impact in their environment, in their society, in their community? Why? This month is going to be a month of undeniable proofs. They prove that Jesus is alive. They prove that we are called the proof that we are sent because we are called. The day you, you gave your life to Jesus, you are justified, you are redeemed, and then you are called. You are called. You are called. You are called to fulfill the purpose of God. Your purpose is realized. He's established. And we need to walk in quickly. Oh, Jesus said, I must do the work of him that has sent me for the night coming. When no man can walk again. He knew. He said the work that I've been called to do. And to finish. Testify that the father has sent me. John chapter 5. Hallelujah. What am I saying is this. They are waiting. Verse 21. Verse 21. Verse 21. Verse 21. Because the creature itself also. Shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption. The glorious liberty of the children of God. They are waiting for you. They are waiting for me. They are waiting. When you see somebody that is living wrongly, he's crying that, why don't you save me? I'm here. Hallelujah. When you see problems around you, he's crying that I'm here. Provide a solution to this problem. That is why you are a child of God. Praise Jesus. Verse 22. Verse 22. For we know that the old creation groaneth and travelleth in pain to get out in now. It is. Nigeria is crying for men to arise. When you see God guests waiting in front of the hotel, they are only just saying, don't you see my nakedness? Don't you see me? I need help. Come and help me. When you walk up to somebody and he say, who told you that I'm not born again? He's telling you, don't you see I'm putting off a self-defense. Be persistent. Save me out of the horror of shame, of my nakedness. I'm empty in the inside. Don't mind. I'm riding a good car, but I 
I'm empty. I value your life. Help me. They are waiting. They are waiting. These are months of the invaluable prose. And it will not be a slogan in the name of Jesus. So what is my charge to you this morning? Move out of your comfort zone. Get out of fear. Get out of complacency. Get out of laziness and complaining. Get out of ease. Get out. Stand up and fulfill your God's purpose. Take the step of faith. Don't allow discouragement. Don't allow the care of this world, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Don't let them stop you. You are unstoppable. Say, I'm unstoppable. Decree and declare, I'm unstoppable. Say it again, I'm unstoppable. Say it again, I'm unstoppable. Say it again, I'm unstoppable. Amen. I'm going to close with two scriptures I saw in Genesis chapter 12. It's a popular scripture, but I'm going to show you something in Genesis chapter 11. Genesis chapter 12 verse 1. We are going to read Genesis 12 verse 1 to 7. Then I'm going to read the last, the last verse in, in Genesis 11. Now, the Lord has said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, on to the land. Hi, we should thee. Why did God not tell Abraham right on the set? Why? 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 Let's read verse 2, 3, only because I'm just being careful of the time. Verse 2, and I will make thee of a great nation. I will bless thee, make thy name great, and that shall be a blessing. God called him out to fulfill his purpose. God called him out to give him an assignment. God called him out to have an impact. But why did he not tell him where he was going to? Let's see verse 7. Let's see verse 7. Let's see verse 7. Verse 7. I want to make a statement. Then I wrap up. Then we take, we, we pray. And the Lord appeared unto Abraham and said, Unto thy seed. No, can we, can you give me verse 6? Verse 6, verse 6. And Abraham passed through the land unto the place of Shechem. Unto the plain of Moriah. And the Canaanite was then in the land. That was the place God wanted him to come. So it was when he left his father's house that the conversation started. If you don't leave the comfort zone, the conversation between you and God and your purpose will never start. Until you leave your comfort zone, that fair. Until you drop that relationship. Until you drop that job. Until you are able to put your faith, your life in his hand. Until you are able to push to. No. The conversation will never start. Then verse 7. And the Lord appeared unto Abraham and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there builded he an altar unto the Lord who appeared to him. Until he got to that place. And God said, yes, this is the place. I will give to you and to your seed and to your descendants and they will possess this land where you are. Let's go back to Genesis 11. Genesis 11. And I want us to use it to pray. Genesis 11. Are you there? Verse 31. See, this call, hello, this impact, this assignment, this purpose, Abraham was not the first person God gave that purpose to. In fact, today, if someone did not mess it up, we wouldn't have been calling the blessing of Abraham. We would have been calling the blessing of another person. But the person failed. And then God looked for another person. See, what God has called you to do, what he's telling you, you are not the first person he will tell. If you fail it, he will move to another person. But that will not be your case. Do I pass a silent point to us? Let's read. 
And Terah took Abraham his son, and Lot the son of Aran his son's son, and Sarah his daughter-in-law, his son's Abraham's wife. They went forth with them from all of the Cadiz to go into where? Into the land of Canaan. Can you now see why when God did not tell Abraham where he was going to? Can you see? Because God knew if Abraham did not leave his nation, his father's house, and his people. The same way that Terah did was what Abraham would do. So God decided to start the conversation until he left. So it was when he left, he started the conversation. Because he knew that the same comfort zone that killed his father, the wrong attitude that stopped his father, might likely stopped Abraham. Then what now happened? And they left and to go, the decision, the determination to go to the land of Canaan. And they came to Aran and dwelt there. Why? Ah, I, will not, I, I will not be stuck on the way. Yes, I will not be stuck on the way. I will fulfill my purpose. I will not die in Haran. See, it was there Terah died. He had the intention of going to, to Canaan. So God told him, God sent him to go to Canaan. But because he failed and God had to pass it in his mercy to his son. What you are supposed to do, we need not start in the life of your children. Say, I will give birth to it. Have I passed a message to you this morning? Can we just pray one minute? I've ended my message. Lord of heaven, help me. I'll fulfill my purpose. I will not die on the road. I will not allow comfort zone to kill me. I will not die on the way. Ah! I will not get to a place and be stopped. I am unstoppable. I'll fulfill my purpose. I will fulfill, I will fulfill my purpose. I receive strength to fulfill my purpose. I will get to my destination. I will get to my Canaan. Oh, that which will be achieved in my generation. I will achieve it. I won't pass it to the time of my generation. Oh, Lord of heaven, help me. Help your people. What Christ like church, the potter's house, to achieve will not be passed to another generation. We will achieve it during our time. In the name of Jesus. Thank you Lord. In Jesus mighty name we pray. We are going to take communion today. And the communion is I will not die on the road. It is the communion of fulfillment of my assignment. You, you, you will make that impact. I will fulfill that impact. I will not give up. I will not allow convert zone. I will not allow... I will not allow the cares of this of this earth. I will not allow troubles, travails, no room for me. Hallelujah. Can all pastors just join us at the communion table? Father, we thank you for today's communion. It's a communion that we're not going to die on the way. Oh, we are not going to do, we are not going to carry out the assignment half, halfway. We're going to fulfill that purpose for which you have sent us in the name of Jesus. Paul said, I finished my course. I fulfilled my assignment. Oh, the same thing will be a lot in the name of Jesus. Paul said, I will soon be offered for my time of departure is at hand as the Lord has shown me. He fulfilled his purpose. Lord of heaven, help us to fulfill the purpose for our life in the name of Jesus. As we partake in this communion, we are receiving strength, strength of the Lord. We enter into communion for the fulfillment of our assignment, for the fulfillment of our purpose in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We sanctify the bread, we sanctify the wine, and as we partake today, we are partaking in the body of Jesus and in the blood of Jesus. So, so it is in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. 
In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm here to take our tithes. Is there any tithes in the house? Shall we package all our tithes now? Shall we celebrate the servant of God for what the Lord has used him for in our lives? Come on, do it for him. Do it very, very well. That day we celebrate the grace. The grace of God will be sufficient for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Please, is there anybody in the house now? Can we file out as we give our tithe? Why can't you talk to him this morning? That by the reason of this tithe, things will never tithe for you. Especially in the month of April, things will never be tithe for you. The Lord will bless the work of our hand. The Lord will increase and expand you in the name of Jesus. As many that be doing, transfer, please. The account has been projected. Talk to him that God help you. Strengthen you. Bless the work of your hand in the name of Jesus. And by the reason of your tithe, God will make you to be a blessing even to your generation. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Lord, we pray this morning, this tithe shall be used for your glory. And as many that has given to the Lord, you will increase them. All and success in the name of Jesus. And that your name alone will be glorified. For in Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Living soul in the house, shout hallelujah. It is offering time, which is blessing time. I want you to package that offering of yours, the one you have come to worship God with this morning. Package your offering. Package something that is very good, the undefeatable offering that you know that God can even use to defeat your enemies. Package it and stand to your feet and begin to wave it to God Almighty. What you have come to worship God with this morning, stand to your feet and begin to speak something positive into those offerings in your end. Send it on errand that this offering, and if you want to do it electronically, the account is being displayed up there. So begin to say something positive into those offering, that this offering will return back to me in thousands, will return back to me in millions. I will never lack. God loves a cheerful giver. So everything that you have come to give to God, ensure that you are cheerful with whatever you are giving. And the Lord will multiply you. You will never be few in the mighty name of Jesus. Poverty will be far from you. In the mighty name of Jesus. And the Lord will give you all and rest. Eh? Concerning the fruit of your labor. Concerning everything that you are undertake. The Lord will make you to abound in every good thing. Your head is restored. Eh? Thank you glorious father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus mighty and wonderful name. We are giving it. Amen. Amen. Choir. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. You are good and your mercy is forever. You are good and your mercy is forever. Oh, you are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh.
Joba to Joba yo. mighty name of Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. Are we blessed this morning? If you are blessed, say, hi, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. No, we don't sound like it. If you are blessed, say, hi, I'm blessed. Praise God. So right about now, I want to welcome some special people in our midst. So if you know that this is your first time at the Porter's House, can you signify by raising your hand? Can you stand up is, if this service is your first service at the Porter's House? Anyone? Oh, let's say raise our hand. service please you love you to come to this side of the church and the ministers will meet with you you can have your seats ma god bless you all right um the other of our service on sundays like this we meet um for the first service by 8 a.m and second service starts by 9 for 5 a.m our wednesday service we have the hour of power and it starts from 5 30 p.m to 7 p.m the daily devotional, which is um, the From Glory to Glory, is available, and you can always um, purchase yours at 4,000 Naira only. Operation Double Double. Have we been engaging in it? Have we been engaging in it? Hmm, okay. Oh. If you're engaging, I think we should see more people in church. So please, let's take it to heart to talk to people about Christ and also bring people to church. And I pray that as we do so, the Lord blesses us in Jesus' name. All HODs are reminded to wait immediately after the second service to meet with the workers' training instructors, Pastor Deshola and Pastor Ade Dotsu at... Um, and to meet with those to be posted to their departments. Please, let's ensure we wait behind for that meeting. All protocols should meet after the second service. Intercessors are reminded of their meeting immediately after the second service. So please, let's all converge at our meeting location. Lions retreat! Glory! Are we excited? Oh, please, you should be excited. Everyone should be at that retreat. Okay, it's um, taking place this week, Friday, 12th of April, 2024, by 9, 10 p.m. Please, make yourself available. Okay, the theme is Faith for Exploits. 
is anyone here ready to do exploits? Is anyone here ready to do exploits? If you know you are that kind of person, please make yourself available. All right? And I pray God will bless you in Jesus' name. Women, I kindly inform that their general meeting is next week, Sunday. Please let's keep that in mind. There will be a general youth meeting next week, Sunday. So youth, please, after the service next Sunday, don't run away. Kindly be patient enough to wait for the meeting. Next week, Sunday, is our family and relationship Sunday. Are we excited? Yes, yes. It's always uh, a refreshing time in God's presence. You don't want to miss it. Tell your neighbor you don't want to miss it. All right, so please, let's come prepared. Cultural Sunday! Woo! Hey! We don't sound excited enough. Hey! Cultural Sunday! Hey! So I want also, everyone, by the time the um, the service is starting that day you will know that God is here God is here in Yoruba He is here in Hebo He is here in Aousa He is here in your language so I want us to come dressing in our cultural attire or whatever culture you want to represent let's make it um, a beautiful sun and I pray that God will beautify our lives in Jesus name uh-huh. 14 days of glory of fasting and prayers. Praise God! Now that we've talked about fasting, our vibe is going down. Don't let it go down. Tell your neighbor, fasting has started. Fasting has started. Are we fast, oh? Are we pray, oh? Some of people here are not saying anything. Tell your neighbor, fasting has started. Are we fast, oh? Are we pray, oh? Yes, it's starting to tomorrow 8th of April sun, um, to 21st of April and there will be meeting virtually in the morning and evening daily all right and for the morning session it starts 6 a.m. to 6 30 and for the evening it's 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. all right links to join would be made available on various whatsapp pages and if you, if you know that you are not on uh, any of the whatsapp pages of the church kindly meet with any of the ministers so you could be added and i pray as we do so god blesses us in jesus name praise god hallelujah can we just stand up as we end the first service hallelujah um next week sunday relationship service it's not going to be preaching on the altar all of us are going to um, we're going to join together to discuss a very important subject. There's a question. I'm going to send a video. Uh, my own contribution is going to be in form of a video. And um, let me tell you what the video will look like. See, how good it is that um, we have brothers and sisters in church. And then um, we'll be coming to church together sing in the choir, pray together, and then um, we'll be evangelizing together. We encourage ourselves. When you are going through stuff, you even call me, I even counsel you. And when it comes to the time of marriage, you go and pick another person. I should not do what? I should not mind. Do you know that? Hello? Calm down a little. Ah, those people, they know kind though. Eh? They are what? <laughs> Hallelujah. They should do what? See, finish. See, finish. Hallelujah. But let me tell you, they are very right. But do you know that 99% of that people that are outside, they are worse than the people you see inside. Wait for my video. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. So next week Sunday is going to be fantastic. It's going both for singles and the couples. It's going to be fantastic. Please, in one minute, I want us to pray for me. Pray for me. 
I'm going to read something out for us. I want us to pray for the Glory Cathedral. If you can just put it on the screen. Um, I will be researching on roofing solution for Glory Cathedral. This project. The ceiling solution. Just wait. Thank you. Thank you. But let's wait. Um, we'll be roofing this project before the end of the year. I, I met a father in the Lord last week. He called me maybe on Tuesday or so. I mean, he sent me a chat on Tuesday evening that I should come on Wednesday, on Thursday or Friday. So I went on Thursday and a Potter's Conference was the major on the Bonner. And the church here is a, is a church on the Bonner. So we discussed this extensively and then um, we decided, he, he said once we roofed, there's nothing. Once this church is roofed and then we're able to put security there then we can hold Potter's Conference in this place. And hallelujah. You can clap for Jesus. And the Potter's Conference at this place is going to be Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Hallelujah. And daddy said, um, we should not invite any word minister. That he will be on, that he said, I'll be on ground since Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That he's coming purposely because of that work. So we discuss extensively. I'll be making a trip shortly um, tonight. And then it's going to be based on the roofing, the ceiling, the AC, the windows, the claddings, the rock, the acoustics, the light, the sound, the media, the equipment, the chairs, the railings, the flooring solutions that will be cheaper and will be acoustic in nature, partitioning, children class materials, and decoration. And listen, why do I want us to pray? And um, don't just pray only today. Um, when we are praying, please lead us. When we are praying, our meeting during the um, CCMS, and let's pray that God should send us help. We must get we must get it right, and that and that the Lord will direct us to the right materials, and then link helps we come. I in this journey, I'm going to visit minimum of about seven cities where I'm going to look for these materials. I want us to pray that. The Lord will give me the right, the right sight to see, the right connection, the right set of people, the right app required. Can we just open our mouth and pray? Father Lord, we pray that you go ahead of me. I will get the right help, the right materials, the right sight will be given to me. I'll be connected to the right people. What is in your mind will come to pass. There will be no single error. No error. Favor will come. Mercy will prevail. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Can we just speak that as we go, the Lord go ahead of us? This is a week of testimony. Testimony will come day by day in the name of Jesus. Lord, as we go today, go with us. Let your touch be all over our life. Be all over our walks. Be on our journeys. Be in our homes. Be in our marriages. Be, be in our families. Be over our children. Be over the church members. Be over the leaders. Be over the workers. Be over the pastors. Be over everybody in the name of Jesus. Thank you Lord in Jesus name. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Can we shout amen? Can we share goodness together? Want to go? Surely. Goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of our forever and ever. Amen. Can we just share it with someone? Surely. Goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of your life. And you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Thank you.